Thank you for joining us again on the newsroom. I am Oyin Adekunle. Over 13 people, including a police officer, have been killed with several others injured following an attack on Berrytown in Bobby District of Niger State. The Niger State Emergency Management Agency, in a memo released on Monday, confirms that a police station was also bombed in the attack. The agency added that the bandits also attacked Ungoa Malambako in Kotonkoro District and abducted an unconfirmed number of people. And this comes rarely a day after about 200 students were kidnapped from a school in Niger State. The Federal Capital Territory Police Command has denied that any of its officers shot activist and convener of the Revolution Now movement, Omoye Leshuwore. One of Yore's lawyers had earlier narrated how a female police officer allegedly fired tear gas at Shuwore at the Unity Fountain in Abuja. But the spokesperson for the command, Meram Yusuf, said in a statement that contrary to the report, police operatives deployed to the scene professionally restored calm at the protest venue. Yusuf explained that the protesters who went on rampage were resisted by police operatives in order to prevent them from causing a breakdown of law and order, adding that there's been no record of any shooting. Meanwhile, the Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Festus Keyamo, says any attempt to change the present administration other than through election is treasonable and will not be tolerated. In a series of tweets on Monday, Keyamo said Nigerians have agreed to adopt democracy as the best and only form of government, and any attempt to change a government other than the ballot box or other constitutional means is treasonable no matter how it is packaged. Now, a new COVID-19 variant believed to be a hybrid of the variants first found in India and the United Kingdom have been, has been discovered in Vietnam. According to the Vietnamese Health Ministry, scientists found the new variant after examining the genetic makeup of the virus that had infected some recent patients. Health authorities noted that the new variant might be responsible for the latest surge in India as scientists observed that it is more transmissible in the air and able to replicate quickly in lab cultures. Vietnam is currently grappling with a rise in infections since late April that accounts for more than half of the total registered cases. And the Niger Customs Service says it will soon embark on a fresh verification exercise for the documentation of all private plane owners in Nigeria following allegations of tax evasion. In a press briefing on Monday in Abuja, the Deputy Controller of the Service, Joseph Sasa, said the exercise became necessary due to the economic and security situation in the country. Atau said the exercise would be in strict compliance with the laws of Nigeria, therefore urged all the owners of private aircraft in the country to come forward with a relevant importation clearance document for verification between June 7 and July 6. And at least six cases of cholera has been reported among the displaced people in Democratic Republic of Congo who were forced to evacuate after a volcanic eruption on May 22nd. Lack of water, toilets, and other sanitary facilities are believed to have led to the cholera outbreak. According to Doctor Without Borders, the city is an endemic area of the cholera epidemic, and with the displacement of the population, there is a great risk of the outbreak of the disease on the ground if humanitarian aid and other care do not arrive quickly. And in sports, Zamalek Basketball Club of Egypt have defeated U.S. Montessia of Tunisia 76-63 to win the inaugural Basketball Africa League, uh, Africa Basketball League Championship, which took place at the Kigali Arena in Rwanda. The first game was broadcast to fans in 215 countries and territories in 15 languages. After the match, Val President Amado Galofal presented Zamalek with a trophy designed to represent the Baobab tree, which is popularly known as the Tree of Life. Following the game, the league also announced the first recipients of the league's end-of-season awards, which honored pioneering African NBA legends. Well, that's the latest update on the newsroom at this time. Please join us again at the top of the half for more.